Hi, I'm Nikita Opreti and today I have with me the founder of yonexleague.com. I have Suruchi Vag with me and uh, since this is a women's special episode, uh, the focus for today's talk would be more around women starting up in India and challenges of being a woman entrepreneur. So good to be with you, Suruchi. Thank you, Nikita. Thank you for the opportunity. So uh, let's start with that, you know, According to you, do you think that the startup ecosystem in India is sensitive enough uh, for women entrepreneurs or do you think it's all hyped up? I think um, entrepreneurship in itself is very hard, no matter if a man or a woman, honestly. Right. It's extremely hard uh, because from day one of your startup, you're always fighting for survival. The odds are just against you, especially time and good talent. So uh, I think... Uh, in fact, I am personally uh, quite surprised why there are so few women entrepreneurs out there. Uh, having said that, entrepreneurship is very hard, no matter it's for a man or a woman. Uh, you know, you go to the rural India, uh, uh -huh. you will see several women who are the sole breadwinners for their family in a lot of homes. You'll find thousands of self-help groups which are mostly dominated by women. So I'm quite, uh, I wonder always, you know, why the urban India, which comprises of you and I, Mm -hmm. uh, even have this question, uh, I mean, this society which is much more educated, which is much more sophisticated, have this, even have this question if women can do, uh, you know, entrepreneurship uh, or do they have to choose between work and home? I think both are possible, you know, and of course there are factors that contribute towards making that happen. But uh, I agree with you. I think it's equally hard, no matter you're a man or a woman. If you have it in you, if you have the idea, uh, if you have the idea that uh, solves or addresses uh, the uh, a, a huge market, mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. if you have that commitment, I think everything is possible completely. Yeah, because see, a lot of women, especially urban women, complain about you know that they need a level ground, they need those equality rights. At the same time, they expect that special treatment, you know, that they they want these separate communities for women where they look for support. So it sounds a bit, uh, you know weird for me but then um i quite agree with you because uh, you know there have been conferences and events that are organized for women entrepreneurship uh -huh. and it's the invite the invitation is only for women i mean hello right why not men why not men be involved in how do we increase that proportion of women entrepreneurship and i think uh, a lot of this urban women have this uh, issue about balance between work and home and how I want my equal rights. I mean, you're a, you're a woman. There are certain aspects about you like like motherhood or care or compassion that are not as much as in men. So we all come, you know, both men and women come with their own aspects. Okay, okay. So, uh, so the general perception is that women are good managers and good team builders. Okay. The reason that I asked you this question uh, that, you know, how do people respond to you versus uh, how they respond to Mohit is, that women are generally treated as good managers or great managers and great team builders, but, you know, not that great leaders. So how has that response uh, been in your case? So I'll tell you something. When I started off, I was uh, on my own. Uh, when we raised uh, funding in August 2011, that's when I decided the company was growing uh, faster than what I had imagined. And uh, as, as I would like to put it, I was too busy building the product and I needed somebody to run the business part of it. Mm -hmm. That's when I decided I wanted Mohit to get involved because he was an early advisor, you know, since the beginning and I used to have a lot of conversations with him. Uh, now, I completely agree with you that um, women are great managers. Not that men are not, but I think uh, what qualities women have are, uh, they have a knack of holding people together right. and inculcating a culture that, that thrives. Culture, not, not that culture that goes away in a few days, but that thrives. And I think the biggest aspect is they have a lot of compassion. So, so they put that compassion in order to make this whole. I think that's the reason when Mohit joined in as the CEO, I I went down to becoming, uh, you know, I, I take I'm like the CEO. Right? So the operations are under me. Yeah. So I agree with you. I think women are uh, good managers, but uh, about them being leaders, I think leading is about setting an example. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what happens at your next week. Uh, one third of the company uh, comprises of women and uh, my design team, product team and behavioral sciences and finances are led by women. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's too much of a generalization when you say that uh, women are not good. 
I think uh, to an ex- and similarly, I think it's too much of a generalization that men are not uh, good managers. Uh, Mohit takes care of business and marketing, and uh, my engineering lead is a is a guy, and I think they are both doing uh, quite decent at their own teams, and I think I'm also doing quite decent about what how I take care of my teams. So I think um, it depends. It depends on what kind of team also you have. I think if there are people in the team who take you seriously, who take their work seriously, I think it's to uh, to manage. Uh, so I think yeah, I mean uh, finance, design, product, and behavioral sciences at your next league is led by women. So I would say uh, I've been lucky, uh, you know, getting good talent on board. Okay, yeah, talking about people taking you seriously, do you think women have to put an extra effort in making people realize that they have to be taken seriously? I think so. I truly, definitely think so. Uh, as much as I say that it's not, uh, it's equally hard for both men and women to to make a mark. I think, especially in technology, where there are any women pursuing technology, I've been to conferences and events, and it was a little, uh, little more of an effort to prove myself earlier. You know, until we got funding, it's a little more effort that you have to keep proving yourself that you know I'm good enough. You know. Uh, and i think there is there is that inherent pressure that when you walk into a conference you see a lot of men and there are very few women so there you feel that i have the pressure of outperforming my male counterparts but i think uh, you do, don't really need to outperform your male counterparts you just have to be good enough mm-hmm. and if you're good mm-hmm. enough you do get noticed of course you have to take uh, those little chances uh, to get noticed i think there are a lot of women who do good work uh, but don't like talking about it but if you're an entrepreneur you know come on you know if you talk your startup talks so you have to take that chance to prove yourself uh, yeah but i think once you're set off then then people respect you for what you are right so also you know talking about funding it's good that you guys are funded but you know what i've heard from the uh, investment grapevine is that investors are generally skeptical about investing in a you know couple startup or a husband wife firm so did you uh, directly or indirectly you know experience anything like that in your case or did any time investors brought that up in your case what is your take on this correct i i won't say it's uh, not true of course there is skepticism about oh you know their husband and wife uh, you know i mean uh, they could imagine probably last night you know we had a big fight so the next day i don't really want to get into a strategy meeting or or uh, you know it's my uh, it valent it's valentines day let's skip it <laughs> i think i don't know i don't know what their uh, what their imaginations are but i think my take on it is uh, for 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 our example uh, mohit and i both play on our strengths i think uh, he has a great um, uh, insight on uh, business and marketing and that's what he takes care of i come more from a, a product and operations background and that's what i take care of uh so there is skepticism but uh, in my ex- in our experience uh, you know of raising this fund uh i think uh, for the, what what i heard was as long as you are committed to your business you know that's what that's what that matters and i think more so if your husband and i think you'll be all the more serious i mean you know all your eggs are in the same basket you either take off or you never take off so we both have our own grounds and i think uh, you will be surprised we we go to a lot of meetings and uh, together uh, probably when we are hiring or you know just any other meeting and um, until the end of the conversation people don't realize that we are husband and wife because i don't see him as my husband you know when i go for a meeting you will find me find both of us in strategy meetings or in team meetings and uh, i take every possible if if there is something that i uh, that i feel is not correct or if i want to argue and similarly for him we take that stance i don't think uh, he comes as a husband to work and i don't go uh, you know work as a as a wife so i think it doesn't right. matter so yeah so there is a very thin line there right between you and mohit like how do you draw that line between what's personal and what's professional because see couple startup okay startup itself you you you're more than full time when you're working in a startup and so couple startup is like all the time you got to talk about your startup wantedly or unwantedly you take work home so how do you balance all yeah, of right. that you know i i agree so um no matter i completely agree with you no matter how hard you try that once i go home i'm not going to talk about it but that happens right because you're just so full with work i mean i would have loved if i would have had 30 hours you know in a day and there was just there's so much to do always 
so we we make uh, you know very very sweet uh, simple rules uh, which often get broken but we try to make them like i always tell my husband when i'm in the car and you know i'm i'm going from home to work i don't want to talk about any meeting okay so if i if something else if you don't have anything to talk to me let's listen to the radio uh, but uh, more of more than more more number of times he'll come up and talk about how does your day look today you know do you have time at 4 o'clock and i'll say hello i'm not i don't want to talk about it so there are a lot of times we i draw that line and say i don't want to talk about it because there is a different equation there are a lot of times when i uh, we take up the lift and come up to the door and when the door gets open my mom or dad or whoever is opening the door will say you know we, we are generally arguing about something and they'll say why do you bring everything to work but that's about uh, that's about uh, that's about any co-founders when wherever they are they keep talking about their uh, venture but yes we do take our times off uh, we that that rule of not talking while i'm driving from home to work that helps or uh, saturday evenings because i think saturday evening we work on saturdays also so most of the day we are at work and saturday evenings we get off a little earlier uh, sunday the whole day to not do work is little hard you at least clear some emails or something but saturday evening then we decide okay it's saturday evening so we're not going to talk anything about work unless there's something really urgent going on so i think uh, if you make those tiny rules and follow them i think um, it's great to have your husband who has complementary skills uh, to be your co-founder also because he really knows what i go through back in office uh, so he knows you know i'm i'm, I'm tired or, or i know that he's tired or stressed out so i think that works yeah so i think it comes with its pluses and minuses as well okay so uh, now uh, almost uh, coming to the end of this talk is there anything else that you would want to convey to fellow women entrepreneurs you know because uh, i see very few women entrepreneurs out there in you know in the startup community so i wonder what's stopping them to start out and any message that you have for them Uh, so my top three things will be self belief. If you have that idea to do that, go ahead and do it. Secondly, don't worry about balance or considering work is different and uh, uh, you know home is different. I think it's part of the same one life that you have. And believe me, all working women, be an entrepreneur or be a teacher somewhere, you have to go through it. So it's nothing out of the world that the entrepreneur goes through it. If you take your work seriously, if I'm a teacher and I take my work seriously, I'm going to work as hard as an entrepreneur right. would work. so just choose your battles choose your battles is the second thing i would say and the three things is uh, you know as i always said a lot of women do good work but they don't quite talk about it uh, you should get a chance opportunity now you tell me nikita i mean it's a little unfair right the kind of visibility women entrepreneurs get i mean do, are there any men entrepreneurship specials exactly. happening no so unfair for them right there are a lot of men i think mohit works so hard but poor guy these people don't get that visibility so fine if people don't take you as seriously pick up these opportunities talk about your work talk about your startup and you get noticed i think try and use your uh, slots you know to 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 make it um, an advantage for you i think that can be worked right so uh, on that note thank you so much for talking to us it was a pleasure talking to you suruji thank you nikita i really appreciate it. thank you and for all the viewers out there hope this helped Do let us know your feedback on this talk and for more interviews with founders stay tuned